Matt Jong. Well done. Follow up running from Honeychurch. Should have honored Goods, didn't, but doesn't matter. Goes back to the skipper Murphy. That works this beautifully, the dogs. Murphy, a penetrating low one to Stringer. We've seen what this boy can do. Spindle Rance inside out. Spindle Shooting. Here I go again. <laughs> Beautiful work got on the end of it all. Welcome to Mike on the Mic. On this edition, it's The Fossil. Daniel Giansiracusa joins the show with his good mate Jared Grant to reminisce and talk all things about Gia. 265 games, 331 goals, and the third most appearances in the green vest of all time. Gee whiz! Enjoy. Hi everyone, welcome back to Mike on the mic. My favourite guest of the four I've had on so far, Mr. Daniel Gian Syracuse. Also on Wikipedia it says that your nickname is Guido. How do you feel about that? Oh, it's not ideal. Um, Scotty West gave me that in year 2000. So, um, Gia will do. Thanks, Jared. Any other nicknames that you, uh, <laughs> you don't mind? I don't think we should start with nicknames, should we? All right, how mate, many mate. have you had? We won't start with nicknames, but uh, <laughs> how many how many games did you play? Didn't you look that up on no, Wikipedia? I looked, it, I looked it up. I just want you to tell me. Uh, rolls off the tongue. Two, six, five, three, three, one goals. Oh, you know how many goals? Of course I do. Well, and kicked you- it at just under seventy percent. What year did you? Uh, <laughs> what year did you uh, have your best year? Eleven. Uh, no, oh, eight, two thousand and eight or ten were my best years, I reckon. Forty-six in two thousand eleven. Yeah, we weren't a great side. It was better in those better sides that we were in. So well, that's not all about you. You know, it's a team game, Jared. Hey, I had a good year in 2010. You must have been feeding me. You had a good year in 2014 and then got sacked, didn't you? Oh, we'll get, we'll get to that. We'll get to, we'll, get to, we'll get to that. We'll get to when you go into the coaching room. Um, sad about you. Twitter has been trending. Mate, always back to you. Yeah, I know you back to me. We want to talk about one of your, one of your highlights of your career. Been on Twitter lately. Fourth highest game yeah, well, in the green vest. You know, you know, so I'm a bit bored. You know, so I'm a bit bored. So I've, I reckon since I've been on Twitter, I've had a total of five tweets and three of them have come in the last two weeks. <laughs> how many, that bloke didn't write back to how many games I got the red vest. I know. You would have got it a bit. I reckon you like, went on top, though. Well, yeah, I reckon it's better to get the red vest than the green vest because you didn't actually make the best 22 players, whereas I was in it. <laughs> well, it would have been 21, do your math properly, because yeah, one of them's in the green vest. From Praxis. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I, well, I didn't mind the green vest because I got the red once and it was, I thought my career was going to end. That was it, I thought. But I... I I scrounged out another three years, I think, really? in the green. Jesus. Yeah, three yeah. years in the green vest. <laughs> <laughs> hey. you got to do what you In the do. 265, they don't know which ones are green, mate. <laughs> not, <laughs> not bad, not bad. Um, so you went, I've got to be serious for a little bit. Um, you went straight from your 265 into coaching, landed, you yep. went straight to assistant coach, yeah? Yes. And yep. our relationship really went strange from there whereas I couldn't give you crap anymore and you were the coach so how, yeah how was, the, it was, how was the transition from being player to then being coach when all the players the year before were your teammates then you had to be yeah well, no nah, we went pretty smooth to be honest there was a couple like yourself and um Zane Cordy, I remember I had to have a chat to him um, because of the nickname I think you gave me. Well, you definitely gave me. So I just needed to nip that in the bud. But apart from that, I used the 
as um, as strength that I had. I felt pretty strong relationships with you boys, and that helped me be able to have honest conversations. And um, hopefully, you felt like um, or we were in the in the same corner together and and trying to get better. And um, you felt that support. Yeah, you had these angry eyes where it meant you were serious in your conversation. And you, they haven't you, changed, you, mate. You were there for about 90% of the day, but you might have got 10% of the day where you weren't like that. Yeah, well, I was looking for balance in that area, but if it's 90-10, there's not a great balance, is it there? Wasn't, it wasn't great balance. Hopefully, you're a bit better at home. Well, I'll probably get the angry eyes with Otis uh, a fair bit, but not with Ruby. So Otis is your little boy. Is he playing footy or is he going down the soccer of the Italian heritage? Yeah, well, he plays footy, but um, he tells me and I think he knows how to push my buttons. A bit like you, that footy's number three, basketball's number one at the moment, soccer's number two. Those two tend to chop and change a little bit, but at the moment, basketball's number one. Is that a financial thing that he's seen what the, uh, the paychecks are and just thought, mm, probably could go for one of them? A little bit and probably out of spite just to get under my skin a bit. Fair enough. What else mm. have I got here for you? Yeah, we'll go. All right. We'll go back to this. <laughs> so you go into the coaching fraternity in uh, 2015. Is that right? Correct. And I get delisted at the end of 2015. Yep. So you would have been in these meetings about list management and... Uh, you know, who we need to move mm. on. Did you push no, me out the door? <laughs> I, w- I wish I was in those list management meetings because I would have kicked you straight out the door straight away and told you. But no, uh, you know, I think uh, you let the bakers bake and list management was left to others and we just... Um, focused on our assistant coaching duties. So, Jared, you had a great year that year. Um, you played 19 games, I'm pretty sure, but um, others thought it was time to move on and you went to sunny Gold Coast with Rocket. I had a nice holiday. Yeah, well, that's it. You, you, you kept ringing me telling me how good the NEFA was and you kicked seven on your ear. <laughs> <every week. laughs> hey, did you ever kick seven? Uh, no, I didn't play VFL long enough. Yeah. I kicked five at yeah. AFL level. <laughs> it was your mate. That's something you've got on me. You kicked yeah. six. You kicked six, six didn't you? Yep. Do you, nice. remember the, do you remember the day? You say must have been bad. <laughs> do you remember the day we were at, uh, we'd had a Mad Monday and we um, were at the pub and we, <laughs> and we had a... Uh, we had a bet against each other, not obviously on the uh, on the on the Brownlow medal, but you said who's going to get the more votes in the Brownlow, me or you? And I took you on as well. I had about one good game for the year. <laughs> you remember that? I can't remember. I Must raised that from my memory. Must have had three beers. Remember that? Was... Remember that fight we had in the VFL in my last year? Where you were telling me where to go, and I just wasn't having it. Yeah, words of wisdom. See, yeah. you should have listened to me. So what and then the... you listened to me when I was a coach and you played 19 games. You what? <laughs> Give us the quote that you gave me during the game. Uh, I, I don't know. I was just telling you, mate, you, I, I don't think you're working hard enough. No, you you have to get, oh, that's right. It was, about, it was about owning the space. If you get into the space and work hard to get in there, everyone else will get out of your way. And he was, you were like, oh, I was, just thought I was running into someone else's space. And, Mate, then, and then you if followed, you listened to me earlier in your career, you would have had a long one. And then you followed it up, though. You followed it up. Well, well, if you don't want to do that, you're not going to get the ball. Do you want the ball? Well, that's that's what we play for, isn't it? Find yeah. the pigskin. All right, mate. That's probably why I got the ass. This is a great segment. This is a great segment. This is going to get plenty of followers on Twitter. <laughs> you want to chuck it out on Twitter? <laughs> Can you at least take your beanie off so we can see the flowing grey locks? Nah, it is. My hair is so long at the moment. I've lost it, mate. Been you know, so I need footy to get back. Can't hear. Go again. You got me? Yep, got you. So, obviously, you were VFL coach again this year. Yep. 
Yeah. So what's um, uh, second what, year? What's that look like for you at the moment? Are you in contact with players or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, oh, I'm still. We've got a WhatsApp group. Um, we've we've sort of left them alone after it's looked like. Um, you know, because all the staff are part time, so they've got they they're trying to get work and stuff like that. So we've given a program, and really, because there's so much uncertainty, um, we've just said try and stay as fit as possible and ready for hopefully if it returns this year. But um, it doesn't look likely. I wouldn't have thought. And is that in terms of your VFL listed players, or are you talking about the AFL players as well? No, nah, just the VFL listed boys. I'm still in contact with the AFL listed guys. Um, a fair bit as well, but it's, um, yeah, the VFL listed guys, I've, I've made sure I've stayed in contact with them. They're actually probably doing it a bit better than the AFL guys because um, they've, they've all got jobs. You know, they're, most of them are tradies, so they're actually feeling quite good about that they've uh, they've still got their jobs and stuff like that. Yeah, we won't go into uh, the off-field stuff that's happening at the moment, mate. Um, <laughs> now, I'm after an apology, actually. Oh, okay. So in one of me in my first year, we were uh, down the beach together, and uh, why? Were, why were we down there? Why were we down there? Uh, well, I will not apologise for this. All right. Well, the first year boys decided when tell we're the in story Dar- though. When we we're in Darwin on the NAB Cup, we thought, well, Scotty West clearly told us, yeah, it's all right to go out. He didn't care. So the first year boys, we thought, oh, right, we'll, we'll head out for a little bit. A couple of the other boys got pissed. I didn't get pissed, but I was out. Anyway, word got back the next day. We got in trouble. I think it was five days, 6 a.m. beach recovery at Port Melbourne or whatever. And then the leadership group, being your humble self, had to take one of those days. I think it was Friday morning, the one you took. Um, And you took the session. Credit to yourself. Came down, um, conducted yourself. I was actually taking... I, I had to go because... Hey, mate, we're live here. You, you broke up again. We're live. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> There's other people that are more important that I have to say goodbye to. I understand. Um, you already got rid of me in 15. Um, basically, we were walking in and I, I something attacked me leg. Famous stingray incident. And um, yep. you decided that you were just going to get in your car and go home. I thought you'd go back to bed, get a coffee. Have I something. did. Have something I did eat. go back to bed. Driving into the club that morning, you heard on the radio that someone had been stung by a stingray from the Western Bulldogs. Yeah. Oh, mate, as a senior player in the leadership group, you know, I'm looking for some condolences. Can I, you know. can I tell my side now? Uh, yeah, right. I was obviously filthy that I had to get up because you guys were um, had a misdemeanour. And it was freezing. We're in the bay. Obviously, no one wants to be there. As soon as our time of 10 minutes is up, I'm out of there. I'm up. You guys are all piss-farting around and joking when you should have been shattered that you made everyone get up and go there. I hear this commotion behind me. I think these guys are just being dickheads. And then I get in the car, go to sleep, get another hour and a half, wake up, James Fantasia's calling me going, what happened? I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, Granny got stung by a stingray. He's going to be out for four weeks. <laughs> I'm like, oh, sorry. On my watch? Well, you shouldn't have been mucking around. We shouldn't have been there in the first place. So that NAB Cup game, we were playing that night, the second game, I'm pretty sure. And um, I was first emergency. And Scott, Scotty Welsh had a sore back and he was pulling out. And I was going to get a game. I yeah. didn't get a game. I got stung by a stingray. <laughs> Say what a sorry, great story. Mate. Say sorry. I'm not saying sorry. No. You made an error. And you're yeah. trying to still weasel out of it by saying you didn't drink. All right. Well, I'm after another apology. We um, <laughs> we like horses. I apologise, Jared. I apologise for the, I'm not I apologize for the stingray. I'm not done yet. I'm not done. Okay. We, uh, we like Next our apology. Horse. We like our horse racing. And... Uh, oh. I do apologise for this. <laughs> yes, you might have chucked together a little syndicate and you cottoned onto a young bloke and you're like, oh, we're going to get this horse. Um, and you've turned me into this person of wanting horse racing now and whatnot. And um, so you thought we'd put one together and, I don't know, cost a couple of thousand or whatever, whatever. Um, 
and uh, NYC Dream? Cost too much. We bought, we bought 10%. That was an error. Should have bought a couple of percent each. <clears throat> Wasn't Don't expensive me. yielding. It was only about 40 grand. Well, anyway, and, we, dr um, we drive out to where we drive to? Kyneton? Kyneton. Shattered we were. <laughs> Kyneton. And it was favourite. Billy jumped the fence. <laughs> it was favourite. <laughs> I think it's still yeah, because you got a gambling problem and you put too much money on it. I think it's at the Kyneton we'll put a thousand on that race. <laughs> no, if I'm not wrong, I think Willie Minton had the most on that. I think we got two grand for it. What's that? Yeah, yeah. I think we sold it for. I think we got twelve grand for it or something. Though. So I you must have missed that. I didn't see back. any of that. Where did that go? Well. You know, it could be worse, Jared. After that, obviously, I'm a bit gun shy, and I get offered a share in a horse called Merchant Navy. Yep, the boys have done well off that. We all know what happened there. They sold it for 30 mil, and they 1% or 2% gets them 200 grand. And then they go, okay, get into Super Seth. And it's a stallion or a cult. And I said no to that one as well. So, you know, karma comes around, doesn't it? I think now horses are no good. That's the now, moral of the story. Now look at you. You're bragging about your NBN in Q with your beanie on. <laughs> and still renting. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I want to ask you about chin-ups. Oh, you're going to go to down the weight path. I want to ask you... How many chin-ups? You actually look like you put a bit of size on. How old are you now? I've hit the 30s. Yeah, wow. About time you started to develop and put some weight <laughs> on. Who are you playing for? Frankston Bombers? Yeah, plug them. You want to come down for a game? <laughs> nah. I played for Beaconsfield uh, a couple of years after I finished and hurt my knee. So, Bevo told me never to do that again. I said, fair enough. Didn't have the green vest. Couldn't play one quarter. Yeah, that's it. I played a full, full game and I think I kicked six or seven. Oh, here we got, go. Got injured late. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, one chin up, first gym session you ever did. Yeah, 66 kilos when I came in and uh, could only do one chin up. I think I cheated. But the rest is history, Jared. Two, six, five, three, three, one. <laughs> we used to do the we used to do like uh chin ups with we had, used to have to do them with ten kilos, didn't we? And then it was max. Yeah. What do you get to? You're actually you're you're actually all right at, in the gym for a guy that looked like you did. Yeah, I'll cop that for me. I still had to do four sessions a week for the Gold Coast and it's just I'm like it's it's over. I'm not doing it. I hit the hundred kilo uh bench press at the coast. Well, maybe you should have committed to the weights room and you you might have you might still be playing you probably get a game for them oh well here we go not any bulldog not any fl coach not just gold actually. coast team oh, can you cut that out <laughs> <laughs> do you want me to move on mate what about the I oh, saw so you actually wrote back on Twitter one of your five tweets your your tweets you put out. Um, our, uh, what's his what's his name? Who used to do our oppo analysis? Craig Jennings. Craig Jennings about cutting lists and no VFL. Didn't impress you, did it? Yeah, I didn't agree with. I didn't agree with that. Um, obviously, I'm invested in. The VFL and our VFL program at the moment. Um, and I just think, you know, the players have got to be able to play somewhere. How do they put their name up? And then in our match committee, we obviously talk about VFL and VFL form a lot um, because we need selection integrity. Um, and if you don't have a competition, then you're gonna have, it's going to be hard for those players. I don't think we want to have NFL style where you sit on the bench for the whole time and... Um, you want to go out there and play, and hopefully um, that means that those uh, state league competitions stay around for a lot longer. Did you see my reply? Even if you go out and jag seven for the NEFL every week. I kicked eight the week <laughs> after. Still couldn't get a game. Rocket was off you by then. No, Rocket was sacked by then. <laughs> <laughs>
Did you see my tweet reply to that that comment from Jennings? Or you don't read my stuff? Uh, nah, nah, I did. I can't remember though. Mustn't have been so, that eventful. So 2019 down to 2010 or 11, every Victorian team that had won the flag. So there was obviously, geez, I can't even remember. Well, dogs, obviously. Yeah, Bulldogs, Hawthorne, Richmond, Box Richmond, Hill. Hawthorne. Um, so in all yeah. those years that the team... No, will... Only Victorian teams. Yep. So Richmond, the year the Dogs won their flag and Hawthorne, their, their three-peat, their reserves team finished winning the VFL Premiership or runner-up in all of those years as well. Yeah, uh, it stacks up. And before that, the, the Geelong team. So I remember playing them early doors in the 2000s and they were, had Bartell and all these guys playing and they ended up going all the way through and being the team that they were. So um, I think it, it stacks up for sure. That uh, if you can build competition and you can teach guys how to win, that culture flows through. And uh, we're, we all know we're here to win AFL premierships, but it helps if the whole team and the whole footy club is successful. Well, I, I, I won the flag for the twos at the Dogs in, I don't know what you, I might have been 13 or something like 14. I'm just 14. looking forward to the reunion, yep. to be honest. Yeah, not long now. Not yeah. long. Can't wait. Four years away. Hopefully we're nice. out, of, out of ISO by then. Can have a beer. What's, what's going on at the Let's moment? Hope so. you, don't, you don't get to spend much time with your family when you're involved in a footy club. So you, what, you were at the supermarket, I think, when I spoke to you the, yesterday or this morning. No, no, it's going well. As you said, you... Some you bolognese? Know, the, 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 yeah, I'm not bad at the bolognese. I haven't got much to my repertoire, but you'd, you'd hope that that's pretty good. Italy. Italia. <laughs> um, but no, good chance to spend a bit more time with the family. Uh, I'm doing a bit of labouring work with my brother-in-law, who's a landscaper. Jeez, it's hard work. Welcome <laughs> to Trady Life, mate. Coaching. Welcome to Trady Life. <laughs> yeah, 7.30 start. She's a uh, uh, smoker I really look forward to. My hand, what, what do you get? What do you get at cool. Smoker? Got blisters. What do you get? No, nah, no, nah, I'll take a packed lunch. Mate, COVID-19, you've got you to worry about your next meal. So I'm really making sure I cook from, take my staff from home. I don't go and get a meat pie or anything like that. Professional. Now, I wanted That's to right. ask, I wanted to ask when you gave, when, when I got to the club, how long did it take for you to give me like the tick of approval that you, you know, you'd talk to me and, uh, you know, you, you thought I was all right or it, how long did that take, do you reckon? I reckon there was a time that I, I'm thinking about, but I want to hear what you what you got to say. Uh, well, you would have been you would have been uh, a bit earlier than others because you're a first round pick, and that's how I sort of I thought. Well, this guy must have a bit of talent, so um, and he'll be able to help me out. He'll be able to help me out. So, I used to hit but you if you're a rookie, what lead? If you're if you're a rookie, then you know it's you're probably going to struggle. So I didn't talk to Dell for like six months until he. Looked like he was going to get a game, and then he did. And then I tried to really latch on because he could help me down the track. So uh, I'd probably say uh, I would have talked to you late in your first year, probably. Yeah, I went with the Bali footy trip. Yeah, so that was twelve months in. Yeah, I reckon you. I reckon <laughs> we, we were, you thought, yeah, all right, I'll give him a chance after we were at the Bali footy trip. I reckon you had a um, you had the the elbow in the yeah. brace. Elbow. And you were yeah, cutting some. Probably, you were cutting some moves. Yeah, yeah. Dill Addison and I found a corner, and um, that was me move for the for the whole footy trip. Probably not funny, but um, yeah, 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 you're probably right. About twelve months, so you got to earn your keep. I hadn't played a game. I don't even think I played a game in the twos that year. See, you're lucky that I talked to you then. You must have we were on a footy trip, though. So Yeah, I made footy trips. Didn't miss those. Remember Kel Ward? What did he do? He, got, he had, a, had a sleep in the nightclub. <laughs> the security just put him out the back on a banana lounge. He had a good trip, that one, Kel Ward. Was that the... Was that put the him in, and then he left his ATM because he left his ATM card in the machine. So he had to borrow money off everyone. Oh. 
genius he's got, he's got on the bigger now look things. at him <laughs> <laughs> hasn't he I know. <laughs> he's got a house in Tam- he's got a house in Bondi, Randwick and Tamarama. He's going well. Yeah. He went to pick after me. Look at me now. Yep. Well, there's a fork in the road. One went one way. Uh, the other don't went you, the other. Don't you start labourer. Oh no. Oh no. Did you what do you do? The, what? Are you labouring? Do you labour? That's kind of what my job title is. The variety of roles though. It's not solid labour. What is it? Like with what company? Uh, it's with an electrician company, so we subcontract for yeah, right. uh, for Optus. So okay. there's a heap of different stuff, which is good. Yeah, yeah good, good. Thanks, mate. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. I'm glad you ticked that one off. For me. <laughs> Did you watch the Jordan doco? Yes. Yep. Right. Well, the young fellas loves loves basketball, so he's into it as well. So it's a good chance to sit down and. Have a look at it. All right, I've got a couple of questions from that. Um, best rookie, that you, like, so Jordan came in as a rookie and was just dominant. Be- best rookie come in that you saw at the Dogs? Um, probably Griff. No, I wasn't there when he came through. I would have said... Um, yeah. I reckon Pico as well. He was older, Liam Pickens. Are you talking a rookie listed player or first year, like when they come in? Yeah, and just first, up? like first. Of, well, their rookies obviously different to us, but yeah, first year player coming in. Yeah, I reckon Griff had had. Oh, well, Bonty, Bonty had an immediate impact. I think he, he played one game spot. in the twos, and then yeah, I think he had one game in the twos, and then that was it. Down at Geelong, kick four in the first quarter, and that was that was it. Then he was in. So um, he he's got to be up there as well. But Griff's one of the best players I've played with, and he's pretty H- consistent. Hardest trainer, probably go with the same person. Not people. Oh, you, I'll give you two. Yeah, oh, yeah, Crossy and Boydy. Yeah, I was the same. I reckon they get away with. They they always just. Love just handballing to each other after training, handballing to each other, a couple of grand. Yeah, well, they, they were professionals and they uh, they got the most out of themselves, Jared. They're elite That's handballers. Why. Hey, they're elite handballers. What are you? Are you bagging them? I'm not bagging them. They're two of the better players that I've played. Kylie above you. Because you're an elite kick. Nah. I told you I had to fucking change how you... You had to change... How you held the ball, mate. Well, I told a story before about how Rocket asked me to kick snaps in front of goal. <laughs> <laughs> at um, least you were getting it. That's you gotta look at the positives. Yeah, you gotta get it first, don't you? I can't That's get it, it any I can't even get it anymore. Yeah, well it's harder in those lower comps. You gotta go and find the ball yourself. Do you reckon maybe I'm a chance on the dogs VFL list? No. Nah. What are the what are the reasons? Uh, you yeah, too old. We're not really. You'd actually play pretty well, and we're we're a good side. We move the ball fast, a bit like the old dog days. <laughs> Have a listen so, to you pump up actually, your own team. You'd actually you'd actually go all right because you get a lot of supply, sixty right. inside fifties a week. That helps when you're playing forward. Well, I'll wait for me tweet in me me DM, and you just let me know what kind of figures we're talking, and um, I'll I'll get back to you. For the love, mate. Yeah, yeah. Um, the last one I had was um, Scotty Pippen. So, I don't even know what my reference is here, but it's probably more so who was the underrated, um, didn't get the, you know, kudos that they probably deserved, do you think? Oh, well, yeah, didn't get put. Probably a hard These one. These guys ended up getting it. In our own form. they end up getting it. Like Dale Morris, Liam Picken, understated, you know, but they end up having, you know, an amazing impact, especially in 16. They had great careers, but um, they started to get the kudos that they deserve because of the impact they had. But they'd done that for a lot longer um, before that, and that was acknowledged inside the four walls for sure. Yeah, I think he was inside the four walls. There's not really people that don't get their kudos as such. It's probably more the onlookers. It's probably the same with Pippen, who knows? But 
Scotty wasn't mm. happy about it at the end of the episode, so... Nah, didn't he? Didn't yeah. he spit the dummy? Do we have but Jordan anyone, pumped him up. Do we have anyone blow up like that? Or one of your, one of your mates had a hair, hairdo? Used to one do of a, mates. Used to do a handstand. Yeah, well, that just went 12 months too long, that one. It was all right for a couple of years, and then the third year just went pear shaped, didn't it? Oh, My been. mate. That was a Have a like, listen to him. That was a, bit like your, <laughs> that was a bit like your last year, I reckon. Just one too hey. many. Hey. Right, fourth. Do we want to talk about you call, being called the fossil? No, nah, well, I've, I've eradicated it. There's still a few that try to. Libba tries to roll with it every now and again, and I've got to pull him up. But um, he's his own man, Tom. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get through there. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on in that head, but he's a father now, which is great. Oh, good on him. He is. He's got. He's. He's got. His partner's. Uh, he. She's had got another one, but Tom's very much involved with obviously both the children, and he's good. He's very good at it, Tommy. He's. Uh, he's going well at the moment, so hopefully. When it all goes back, he's, uh, he's in the team pretty soon. Awesome. All right, mate. Well, good to hear from you. Good luck on the work site tomorrow, mate. Don't Maybe get some gloves. Yeah, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to. I didn't really want to show my weakness, but I think I've got to uh, get some gloves and make sure I look after these hands. Awesome, mate. Good to speak to you. It's been a while. Um, stay safe. And uh, cheers for coming on. Thanks, Jared. It's been a pleasure. And uh, knowing you, this will get a couple of views from people and might be trending. Who knows? Oh, Bob will love it. <laughs> <laughs> See you, mate. mate.